I'm sitting here in Foley Square at the court hearing that I was scheduled to go to was postponed. That happens. It's part of litigation. But it did seem to me that this setting would be a very good one for me to explain something that a lot of people are confused about, especially overseas, which is the difference between federal and state courts in the United States. As it happens, if you look behind me, you'll see the civil division of the New York State Court, the New York State Supreme Court, which is not really the Supreme Court. It is supreme compared to lesser courts in the New York State civil system, but that's New York State Court. And panning here a little bit further back, also with columns, that's the Southern District of New York and the Second Circuit Court of Appeals. Those are federal courts. These are two parallel courts that exist in the United States. They're everywhere. And you can find yourself in one, or sometimes both, in the course of a given case. Sometimes, like in, for example, in the Florida case that we talked about on my podcast with Andrew Esquire, uh, and the Disney case, the same or very, very related issues can be litigated in both federal and state court, and that, that has happened to me. The real question is, which court's laws are you proceeding under, and sometimes, which court has jurisdiction over you? Can you ever be in the same court as a criminal defendant on, for the same conduct? The answer is yes. You can offend both sovereigns. Even though the Constitution prohibits double jeopardy, you can still be held responsible for violating, for example, a state law prohibiting assault or terroristic conduct, and at the same time, federal civil rights laws for violating the civil rights of the person you assaulted or intimidated. So we can talk about that some more some other time, but again, I couldn't resist the setting, and plus I'm all dressed up with nowhere to go. There's one more thing I should add. One of the most common, or if not the most common, ways that a person could find himself in federal court in a civil case is under the concept of diversity jurisdiction. This isn't the kind of diversity that means everybody gets a trophy. Rather, it means that you have citizens or corporations of two different states on each side of the case. There has to be what's called complete diversity. There can't be any two that match up. The idea is, and this is something that is a gift from Congress, that historically people who were sort of out-of-towners didn't necessarily expect to be treated fairly by state courts in the out-of-town place where either they sued or were sued. So the thinking was if we have access to the federal courts for those kinds of cases uh, involving judges who are not elected and who are appointed by the President of the United States, there's less likelihood of prejudice. This has become increasingly less relevant as a sociological phenomenon because on the one hand people have seen that there's plenty of hometown effect in federal courts as well but also state courts are a lot fairer than they once were people are not as alienated from each other just by virtue of being in different states these days but that is also a topic uh, beyond the scope of today's lesson